We're back. So that's why I couldn't stop itching my butt. Wow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they make a cream for that. No, not for this itch. They do now. They have one for butt stink. I know that. Trust me, I wouldn't know. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, it's called like Loon or Noon. Something for swamp ass. <laughs> mm. It's a real condition to laugh. I actually <laughs> recommended it to my husband. I was like, I love you. You should probably get this. Or I, I love you. you. <laughs> if, your septic, if your septic allows, um, dude wipes are awesome. Oh well, yeah, who doesn't like wipes? Wipes are like the only way to really be clean. Yo, I got on that train, the wipes and a bidet. Wipes for oh, uh, super awesome. You don't have to flush them. You can just put them in the trash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what do I do? <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you have a favorite scent? Because cocoa butter's getting old. So the ones with witch hazel are actually nice too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A cooling mint and witch hazel. That's, that's kind of cool. I never would have so, thought mint for my butt, but. So yeah, it sounds a little spicy, but like cold podcast. spicy. Hi. Hi. Say again. Welcome Hello. to the poop smearing paper podcast. Jeez. Oh yeah. You know what? D and D poop right? smearing. <laughs> nope. No, that's weird. I'm out. Wow. Okay. So the last time, oh, we, <laughs> there goes Chrome. The last time we were here, you guys had a pretty epic fight with. A giant spider, which was not actually gargantuan size, but almost gargantuan. Like, it was a, almost that level of size. However, Mama Spider is kaput, and her 12 little, I don't want to say little, they're actually quite large, too. Big as crone, enlarged. Yeah. They're as big as an enlarged crone. The size of ponies! Uh, and you He's definitely got it. those, and there that you, you guys did excellent. We got all the stuff, killed all the spiders, and you've been resting and packing up your tents and everything else. Apparently, roasting marshmallows over an open fire. I don't know what. Oh, somebody's on fire. Okay. This player's on fire. Is that Gunpot Russell? <laughs> wow. <laughs> My bad. Effigy. With candle wax? You know it's me. That's all. <laughs> I didn't know we were uh, at Burning Man this year. But I'm... um, Well, sometimes you gotta take a servant, you know? So now that you guys feel like a nerd. Now that you guys packed up the stuff and are finishing up your breakfast, because, you know, those spiders definitely woke you up in the wee hours of the little bits left of morning. Um, uh, the DM is going to do you one solid and say that you guys now have uh, your long rest is uh, done. Oh, no. Sorry. Oh. Can't level until you get back onto the story. And we're we're not even we're traveling to the first part of chapter two. What level are we actually? Yeah, levels are gated by story. <laughs> I must dab the story. Pretty Anyways, <laughs> so you guys definitely point. well rested. Get all your spell slots back. You're gonna need yeah. them probably. Who knows? Uh. And uh, you guys are finishing up with breakfast. What do you guys do? Crone's going to end character high five Vanth for the uh, hypnosis confusioning thing. Yeah. And then he's going to look at all the loot and just like, he's really happy. Guys, this is, this is a great start. This is an awesome start. <laughs> uh, Keru uh, goes up to Vanth and gives her an unexpected great big bear hug and she says I, I remember this one time this one girl cast a spell that literally saved our lives 
And then this okay, one then... time, that same lady smothered Granny with a pillow because she wouldn't stop touching. So Chrome quickly <laughs> yanks Granny. <laughs> Puts up her withered hands, says, my bad, my bad, whatever. She needs her space. Chrome, Chrome will try to yoink uh, Keiru. Like, hey, come here, come here, come here. Oh, also, I forgot to, to remind you guys that you decided that you were going to try and get Crow to be a uh, Obusan. Yeah. You guys are going to yeah. train him in that. We can help. Um, thank you for reminding me. But really quickly, Crone needs to talk to Keiru. Um, tries to yoink her over. He's like, hey, come here, come here. Ke- Keiru. Uh, yes, yes, she says. And he leans into a whisper. Listen, as far as anybody else knows, we both totally practiced that and meant to do it, right? Right? Almost as if Keiru has a mouthful of pizza. She says, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, really? She doesn't know exactly what he's talking about, but that's like 50% of the time. She puts her withered hand on his huge shoulder, seven and a half feet tall, and she says, he reads. Yeah. Crone, you are the best of all humans. And he just walks away. He smiles and she walks away too. Unfortunately, it's in the opposite direction. Then she realizes, oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine we're all kind of like meandering, packing things up and stuff. It's daytime. Yes, I imagine that. Yep. All right. I have switched to my headset because I don't want to. My speakers are extra loud. Okay. So. Granny's over there doing whatever. Apparently. Um. Princess Mittens is pretty much just gnawing on whatever she was eating for her breakfast. I'm not sure what it was. Probably spider leg. Who knows? Uh, Spider children. I was going to say she caught a mouse. Ooh. (laughs) Okay. Well, she's chewing on that. Mm -hmm. She finishes up her stuff, stands up, looks over at Crone, reaches up, goes, uppies! Crone immediately falls for it. 100%. Aww. But he, but he yeah. throws her. And because like he just, she like, is a cat, <laughs> she lands nimbly and almost weightlessly onto her shoulder. Crone's on head. We totally meant to do that. I mean, you know, she's she's uh, Nekomata. She's good. She's Nekomata fun. No. I hope she doesn't drown. Why would she drown? Oh, things. Cats are Water. usually good swimmers. Yeah, cats mm. can swim pretty well. They just don't like water. Typically, typically, water is usually the leading cause of drowning. That's true. So, everyone who's ever drank water in the past has died. (laughs) Theoretically, (laughs) this episode is dark. There's not (laughs) one survivor from a bottle of of Zephyr Hills water. So, drink responsibly. Guess so. There's an interesting correlation going on over there. We're like 90% water, right? We're that close to drowning. Yep. So, actual factual fact, I forget what minute measurement of PSI it is, but there is an absolutely minute measurement of PSI that if we were to de- deviate from it by that much, our body would literally just unassemble. Molecularly. Just Disassemble. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. D&D is fantastic. All right. Um, That's what happened to that drinking witch. This has been Unfun Facts. Unfun I facts. Great. You have baculum, I have disassembled. <laughs> A magnetar at 1,000 kilometers away will kill you. This is because the magnetic field is so strong it literally breaks down the molecules. 
it'll stretch the electron orbits out of shape and the chemistry of life ceases to be. I'm, I'm so happy that we're here at this moment in time. So crazy. I can see the future. I would oh. want to spend the end of the world with no other people other than you, my fellow. Uh, Betty White. I would. I, y'all are Who great. Sex her last... up. I would sex yeah. her up. Wow. Wasn't going there, but also <laughs> would go there. Mm-hmm. I would knock the dust off of that like my sweet Hispanic maid. Wow. Yeah, I would have. I would have thrown into Betty White for sure. Yeah, I mean, not mind you, not not for laws of actual attraction. But there is no greater notch in one's bedpost than the white. She is white really white. amazing, yeah. I would, I would straighten out her wrinkles with my iron. <laughs> is that what we're calling it? <laughs> oh I would, my. I would. We've gone too far afield. <laughs> oh my God. The Bloodhound Gang. <laughs> I would batter dip my cranny axe in her gut locker. Ooh la la. Wow. How did we get here? I don't I know. I gang. don't know either. I would drink two gallons of water and give make her Shit. my golden girl. <laughs> Whoa. I would eat. No, 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 no. We're not going to do this. Need, I need an adult. Oh, hey, Bob got way worse. Yeah. I know. Yeah, One day, Russell. I'd give her my Betty White. Wait, damn it. Red, white, and blue. Betty, white, red. Forget it. I forgot. I messed that one up. Make sure that you guys have full health before you uh, take off in your ship and face. Slots. And spell slots, yeah. And anything else that needs replenishing from a long rest. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I was at last fight. I thought I, I thought I spent all my key, my uh, key. I was just a silly goose. She's totally real. Yeah. Uh, your follower, Crow, has gotten on the ship. And is what just waiting for you guys to get ready to take off. He I has like been contemplating know. the whole Obusan thing for a while, and it's decided that he will go with whatever you guys suggest. Nice. Above game, I just want to have a, a pocket strong healer. But you know, guys, we're not exactly guidance counselors. I'm not sure if we're qualified to tell him, you know. How she, how he should invest his future? Oh, he Man, doesn't know any better. <laughs> he, he doesn't. He thinks you guys are amazing and, and probably well very capable, and yes, very well put together. Wait a minute! Did he just hear the whole Betty White uh, debacle? No. Uh, yes, no. No. Oh, Betty White. Very above game. Very above game. I, I get that he thinks that we're smart. Yes, he thinks that you guys are very smart. Even oh. little Margaret. Oh, he. What? Yeah. Well, no, she is. She says she's, she's actually a genius. They didn't. They didn't. No one told you. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's very wise. Oh, that yeah. poor innocent boy. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, when he hears her talk to to Daniel about something, he wonders what the hell they're talking about. Things like Disneyland or television sets or, you know. Bill Cosby. Yeah, and no <laughs> idea what, what they're Horse. talking about. Oh. We wouldn't know about that either. I mean, Daniel might. What? You know about Bill Cosby? Uh, he'd probably be yeah. like, oh yeah, I used to watch that when I was a kid. And then he was a rapist. Oh my. <laughs> We're going dark places. <laughs> so, when you guys are ready, we can take off and go to the next campsite. Yes, yes, let's please take off. Let's take off and go. Uh, Crone and Russell. Yeah. Do you want me to move your characters? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, there we go. Right there next to the teddy bear. There you go. Who is going to drive? 
Uh, uh, thanks. Go ahead. You want Shotgun. me? All right. Uh, and then we, uh, we have, yeah, I assist you and you drive it. Did you have animal? Yeah, animal yeah, yeah. Now I found out that I do have, oh no, I don't. Do I have precision in animal handling or not? Is a check mark. No, I don't. I don't. All righty. So here what we are. What does that put you at score wise then? What do you mean? What? Two, what? Like, what do you have plus two? Uh, what do you have plus total to? I have plus three to animal handling. So, so we're even. Okay. So we're we're tied up. So do you want to do you want to assist or you want to do it? I'm I'm gonna assist. So Crone Crone looks to ship face and he goes. <clears throat> Oh, who's a good little ship? Gosh, you're so so strong, and you're brave, and you handled the spider all by yourself, practically. You're amazing. And then he really hopes that'll help. You can feel the ship waving back and oh. forth. Oh. <laughs> no, never mind. Sorry, legs. You got you got cover for me. Uh, this ship right. definitely was appreciative, but it's still. Not as brave as you're telling it. It is. Apparently. Listen here, ship. There's not a lot of expectation upon you. We just don't want to die. So, just bare minimum. <laughs> Lee. <laughs> that does it. You got does over it? a 10. So, it starts <laughs> taking off Sweet. and going up. Into the sky. Fantastic. All right, so you guys have come a long way so far, and you are leaving here. Huh? Oh, I was telling Jeff thank you in Spanish. So gracias, uh -huh. mi amor. <laughs> nice. Sorry. <laughs> El gato grande. <laughs> oh, Banyo de la Biblioteca Donde. Wow. <laughs> Jeff Me is gato from is armor. Pequeño. <laughs> What'd you say? Mi gato is muy pequeño. Yo gato Taco Bell. <laughs> Mitsubishi. Wow. Chevy. Mitsubishi? <laughs> All right. Uh, Hyundai. Ah, so you guys take off from the lake bed, the dried up lake bed, right there, and you make your way across a much large, mm, it's, it's a very large river, one of the largest in all of uh, the far shore. Yeah. Um, it's quite beautiful pristine waters you can see there's there's large fish in there you can see their shadows even from way up where you are so they must be quite large um you don't see a whole lot else going on when you're crossing the river uh there's the rainbow in the distance it's very nice and pleasant and as you're getting closer to the other shore of the Yamachushin Empire, or the heart of the far shore, you can see clouds. It's pretty a pretty dark and barren land. There's not a whole lot of trees. It's rocky and looks kind of foreboding. I'm just waiting for Margaret to sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. <laughs> You can look um, to the south and you see that there is copious amounts of mountains. Um, very tall, treacherous mountains. All to the south. There's a couple of mountains to the to the north, but you're you're pretty much flying straight through what would be like a valley. And the valley doesn't have a lot. You don't see any sign of civilization for the most part either. We keep going this way. Alrighty, so 
I would like you guys to give me a perception check as a group. Okay. You said perception? Uh, eight. Oh, oh, thank God. <laughs> Two well, fails. Plus nine to perception. I was gonna say someone's paying attention. Yep. God damn, that's Crone. awful for me. What the hell, so, roll twenty? Crone was looking at the mountains and looking at Daniel and going, "So <clears throat> there are parts of hell that look just like these mountains, but way more fire, um, and way uh -huh. more smoke. Like, uh huh. Yeah. Big little shape size forebodingness. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They remind cool. you of home. A little bit. Um, all right. So as you're passing by, you see the remains of a, a village. It is very, there's, there's nothing there. It looks like it's been abandoned for about five or six years, at least. Um, and you see Crone specifically, when you look closer, you can see the shambling remains of the people who used to live there. Sharon points to the shambling remains of what are now dead people that are in the current area they are flying through. Now you guys are flying over top of them. Zombies? Oh, they still do shambling. have some, some flesh on them. But they're... Shambling as in uh, moving or shambling as in like, falling apart? Shambling as in they're they're moving and falling apart at the same time. Like they're Ew. Oh heavens to Betsy. They're they're just like They are zombies. Yep, they're undead corpses. Zombie or not zombie. Now Caden, your character, Daniel, would know that in the far shore, if you have zombies, most likely it's a plague. Uh, oh, a plague right. or a curse, usually plague. So we're kind of seeing like a T virus scenario. Potentially, I don't think so though. It's it's just your normal everyday plague. Yeah, someone's poisoned the water well. That kind of stuff. Gotcha. There is a I... in my boot. Yeah, I, re I relay the uh, the information uh, to the party that, you know, hey, this, this could be a plague or a curse, but probably a plague. So uh, we're going to practice some social distancing. <laughs> you guys are definitely up far enough um, that you, you guys won't get anything unless you decide to check out the village. But, and, yeah. Can, can, can we tell if it's moving down or if it's progressing the opposite direction of where we're going? Oh, you wouldn't have an idea of that. It's literally just the that village. And okay. judging by the corpses, they've been there for years. Oh, there's, okay. There's no new corpses. Most of them are falling apart at this this point. I have 120 okay. feet on Firebolt. How high up are we? You guys are like cloud level. Does, does she give any indication that she's planning planning something, Vanth? Like, would Crone be able to roll a perception if he's looking Don't at you? Don't do that. It's not their fault. It would be an insight. I mean, Cause, at cause this point, Crone's got a comment in mind. I, I, I think we, they, we stay on they'd the rather live. The zombies. Huh, huh. I am so, pretty sure they are dead. How about this? If if Vanth is in any way wants Crone to be aware of this, Crone would say, "If they don't see us yet, they will after you do that." Oh, what are they yeah. gonna do? They're corpses. <clears throat> they to to Crone... be fair, the zombies in a zombie type of creature in the far shore isn't necessarily the like the zombies in. Like the Forgotten Realms or something. Well, so, they're they're pretty much soulless husks of nothing. They're just plague spreaders. So, 
Crone uh, recalls back to, I think the group had a pretty good lore check uh, for this area, and he goes, remember the uh, giant undead construct people things that were, I don't know, multiple buildings tall? They probably start somewhere soon. <laughs> Maybe staying low is good. Or, well, you know, not low, not low, not low, no, high, staying really high, but not. If you want, you can also do another, like, you. if you want, you can do another history check to see if you remember something, like, because, Karu, you were in the library. Because we're in the area, can I roll a survival check for this area for the first time today? If you would like. That would give me advantage. There you go. Hot damn. Okay. She nice. didn't really... Uh, anyone else want to roll history? They can do that, too. She's crone with a nat 20. Yeah. Was... yeah I'm horrible. Um, well, You're crone is assisting Karu. Okay. I want to do my own. Oh, okay. Uh, never mind. I'm doing, a survival, I'm doing a survival check for the area. I get advantage for the first time of the day. Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry, Pixie. You can't seem to recall anything um, with uh, with legs. She's just kind can of I uh, do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I could I just do like a couple of random rolls after everyone does to clear out whatever the fuck is going on with roll twenty? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you can do that right now if you want. I bet That'll you get work. Nat twenty. And you're right. Roll waste spam. It. Roll spam. Call out how many you want to shake out first. That's good luck. All right, I'm going to do four. Ready? Do it. Right, take out four bad rolls. Four bad, four bad rolls. One, two, three, four. four. Crappy, crappy, crappy. That's fine. That's fine. You Done. open it. You open the flow. Yep. You open the pipe. We're good. Yep, good job. Oh, all yep. right. I'm in. Super <laughs> <not real. laughs> I figured it would take about four. <laughs> all righty. So, uh, Kylunt. You remember from being in the library at the uh, Onmyoji Bureau? You remember something about biological warfare and how they would destroy entire villages just to try and root out the enemy. You remember that these kinds of villages usually were set as traps. Uh, she will relay that information. Yeah, second thought, maybe let's ignore this. Because you rolled a 20. <laughs> um, Crone, with your survival skill, you know that the people down there are beyond saving. There's a million places to hide. Any number of other really bad things in there. And... Everything's so dilapidated, you're pretty sure there's nothing worthwhile to even pilfer. However, looking off in the distance, you do see there's some activity with uh, circling, what you think is circling birds anyway, up ahead. Far in the, in the direction you're about to, to travel towards. Crone points to that exact thing. Shows the whole group. Daniel, with your history check, you know, based on your interactions with your god as well, that um, even, even if you guys were to go down there and you were bitten by a zombie and you might end up getting sick, you would have to die first to be able to, to turn into one of those. So you would also know that they're all dead for the most part. They're not possessed or anything like that. They're just dead, dead, dead. Grave times. Yeah. And Pixie, you just recall a recipe for, for, for tarts. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're I just hungry. I remembered my G chord. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. Yep. That's about it. <laughs> I 
I'm going to need an animal handling. Okay. To see if you stay on course towards the flying birdie thing. Like it to assist her still? Mm, yeah, yeah. Anyone can insist if they want. Yeah. Big ship, big ball of ship that does good things. There's your There session. we are. Yeah. I had to today. That's that's magical. Yep. Who's a good ship? Awesome ship. 18. Very Definitely nice. Definitely not a pile of ship. <laughs> You're all pretty full of ship. Wow. <laughs> or is the ship full of us? So the it's ship is going. Friendship. Full <laughs> speed towards the mass of what you think are birds. You're hoping they're birds. They're probably birds, right? Right. <laughs> Miles ahead. You can hear clanking and some some noises. And then you hear an explosion and some fire and smoke. What do you guys want to do? It seems uh, like you might be heading towards a hot zone. Look at the explosion. See where it came from. Uh, perception for anyone wanting to try and see what that is. God damn it. Damn You're getting them out now. It's okay. Ah, 19. All right. Uh, Pixie, when Legs tries to, to look at this, she squints, right? <laughs> and a bug yeah. flies right in her face. Fair. You just hear... Right there. Can't see a thing. Um, How rude. I know, so rude of it. <laughs> Daniel is pretty sure that's a battle ahead. Take three for my roll. I made a mistake. <laughs> hmm? Take, th take away three for my roll. I made a mistake. It's still 20, so it's still a really good roll. Crone and Kailunt, you definitely see that there's a, a large throng of beings down there just making all sorts of havoc. Things are on fire. There's a person on fire. You're not sure what's happening, but there's definitely like armored yokai and people, and they are just fighting it out. And the big explosion was what appeared to be a kind of caravan. Like a, a wagon of sorts. Um, you can see that there's a couple of quite large skeletons and Oni and a couple of others down there fighting against what appears to be about 20 humans. Um, it's, you're unsure who's going to actually win. It's like numbers versus sheer power. <laughs> so it's anyone's guess, really. But it definitely looks like humans versus yokai. And one of the one of the big skeleton things is just chucking rocks, like literal boulders. And it looks like they've got a few spellcasters down there too. They have not noticed you at all. I'm assuming the giant skeleton is chucking rocks at the humans. Mm hmm. Okay, as long as it does not chuck rocks at us. Yeah, so, Chrome looks at the group. <clears throat> they definitely have range capability, though, both of them. Yeah, if we're just, we're just so, flying past. Surely they wouldn't attack us, right? <clears throat> I, I had a thought. Crone said to stay high, and that got me thinking. If we knew a masonry guy, and we agreed to put his cargo on the boat, we could ship bricks. 
Oh. <laughs> That's terrible. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> All right. So you, what do you guys want to do, though? Are you just going to fly over? Are you going to try and camouflage yourselves? Are you going to get a closer hey, look? I don't think hey, flying Ru. straight over is a good idea. Keru elbow, elbows yeah. her ways up. This isn't our battle. We got to get away from this place. We have a journey and a destination to get to. Let them fight amongst themselves. Crone's kind of with Keru on this one. Alrighty. So how about I make a block of ice and somebody like makes you know a huge fireball, we turn it to steam, we disguise ourselves as a rain cloud and get gone. Wouldn't it steam right on. blow away? Shh. I like it plan. What about what about um Kairu Kairu and uh Van and, and Kailu Sorry. Kyloon and Kairu, can't you guys like make illusions? I can make an illusion that's about a twenty foot cube. I'm pretty sure the ship is bigger than that. We only need to uh, disguise the bottom half. It's true. Oh yeah. Could you make... Yeah, yeah, it'd be pretty good. It's like twenty by twenty feet. You can make a rectangle with it, probably. Uh, no larger than a twenty foot cube. Oh. Well, okay. Isn't, isn't How the long volume is the ship? Of a foot cube? Let's go back to the previous screen to look at the ship. Goodness, okay. It's like 10, 10 cubes. So uh, it's like. So I get 50. Like 50. 50. Yeah. I mean, half is still better than none, maybe. Hmm. Maybe like the front half, and by the time we'll pass you, the batter, they won't notice? Above game, does more than one person have that spell? Keru? Why are you putting myself on mute? <clears throat> Keru does not have that spell. Do we have scrolls? Ooh. Keru has no scrolls. She's scared of them. She doesn't know how to use it. Oh boy. Oh god, she doesn't know how to read. She's she does. Okay. Do we want to disguise mm -hmm. it as something with, like... Uh, what would... If we move real fast... Yeah? I thought if we... Uh, that would in my statement right there. Dot, dot, dot. If we moved real fast... Oh, like a gust of wind? Oh, I mean, talking, our ship moves fast over yeah. above the battle. Does it move that fast? We all look up at the DM. Mm -hmm. We all the look ship... up to the sky. <laughs> the ship can move pretty fast, but it's already kind of going top speed. Got it. Oh, let me ask you this question. Ah, uh, Kaloon. Range of 120 feet spot you can see within range can you make two Kyrin with a chain hooked to the front of the bow of the ship uh, make the Kyrin as blazingly powerful fiery resplendent as possible making them obviously obviously those two Kyrin are the motive force of this large if anyone was going to try to stop us, they'd shoot the engine, right? It aimed for the Kyren, 120 feet ahead of us. A, a Kyren? I can make one. Okay. A creature. Even better. I mean, okay. You can also I, cause a distraction so they look away. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, but we they're also pretty focused on each other right now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing we try to get by. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we just. 
maybe clouding part of the ship is the right move. I'm just thinking of like ways we can kind of disguise or shift it around. If you guys want to combine efforts together, so I'm thinking of. Then. So half of us can make it look like it's a cloud, and the other half of us can make a bunch of steam. And kind of convincing. Yeah. Well, if you guys want to moosh all that together, because it's all sort of magic, right? It could be a combo spell, which makes the spell even more powerful through your teamwork. Yeah. Uh, uh, will assist in any way. She really has no spell worthy to assist, but she can make smoke that smells like burnt pancakes. Oh boy. Ooh. That's, that's about it. That yeah. Only exactly perfect. Yeah, you can make smoke. Um and then Daniel, you're gonna make some some ice. Right. And then Vanth, you were gonna use major image? Yeah. What about Crone and Pixie? We're gonna mm. sing along. All I have is like press the digitation would be like the only thing that falls under that. Or I could do concussive sound and make it sound like thunder. Ooh. Oh, I could you coat that. the bottom of the ship with ice, you know, and it would slowly melt and drizzle down. You know, boom, rain. So, Crone and Miss Mittens can just like happily be proud as they fold their arms and nod, smiling, kind of out of contribution. <laughs> <laughs> we did good, Mittens. We did good. You could use your Oni Fire to help um, Daniel with the yeah. uh, steam part if you would like. Totally. And Mittens can cheer you on. And That's then what do you say, pals, shake on it. Yeah, Crone. Crone can trip some. Crone, uh, Crow will use his uh, innate gust feature that Tengu yes. has to try and direct some of this smoke and steam and all that stuff. How far can you make the sound? Or the concussive sound? Oh, yeah. That's loud. It's a mile. Mm. Yeah. I meant, like, where can you center it at? Ah, um, Let's see, yeah. Target, five feet. Range, 60 feet. One action. All right, where do you want the 60 feet to be? Like, where do you want it centered? Away from the ship? Under the ship? I think it would be... Behind the ship? Before the ship? I think it would be ahead, wouldn't it? Like, don't you normally, like, hear thunder and then see lightning and clouds? So I could yeah. do the prestidigitation on the back half to do, like, the lightning? Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, If you guys could all roll me a percentile, a D100. Okay. I would appreciate it. Nice. Is this the kind of campaign where 69 counts as 100? <laughs> oh, I, somehow I did it twice. Oops. Hmm. Okay. All right. Ignore the second one. I, I, twice. Noise. Okay. So. Hmm. Daniel. <laughs> Your ice trick with the, the rain and the steam works perfectly. Mm -hmm. It really? does wonders. Yep. Uh, Kailunt, your mirror image is working alongside everybody else's spells. And... 
Crone, you are definitely helping Daniel with the steam part. And Pixie, you managed to get the lightning effect down. However, the lightning doesn't reach all the way to the bottom and they don't the people on the ground don't get to see the actual visual effect. But they do hear the concussive sound. Yeah, However, my, my 85 was pretty good. That sucks. Oh, uh, it was it was a uh, low to high. Oh shit. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's just to see how well you guys mesh together and how well oh. the people on the ground would be taking it. Um, because Crohn's was not necessarily interactive to the people on the ground and was just aiding somebody else, it didn't matter as much. However, you still got it through, and the people on the ground just think there's a little thundercloud rolling over them at this point. And you guys pass unnoticed. Woohoo. Uh, I was tempted to drop some copper coins off the edge. <laughs> Why? Uh, ha, ha. The legendary money cloud. Uh. If it reaches terminal velocity, I'm sure that could hurt some people. Maybe. It would hurt quite a bit. Probably wouldn't kill anyone, though. Might distract them, however. But not long enough for you to get away. They'd probably yeah. just be like, oh, there's money on that. All right, so you guys pull in to an area. It's getting darker, and you can see that there's kind of a clearing. There's no activity, nothing that you can tell. However, you can tell that this place had some kind of epic battles in the past. Let me get you guys to pull into the area. Glamping. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're pulling up. You're pretty high off the ground. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so don't fall off the ship. High as a kite. And uh, the sun's getting getting low, and it's about time for you guys to uh, go and set up camp. You guys can choose where you want to camp, or, you know, the location. Oh boy. Oh boy. Probably not where the dead camp is at. Just above game tip. <clears throat> yeah, you think? I don't know, uh, I thought it looked kind of cozy. Maybe opposite of the dead wagon and dead area. Yeah, this is definitely a, a dead side, and a not... Well, a less dead side. I think the less dead side. Maybe under some shade. Maybe all around the shade and using the trees as natural cover. Unless there's mm -hmm. elves, in which case we're fucked. I don't know. It's not a taco. It's a shield hiding most of a skeleton. Looks like a taco to me. Well, Maybe you don't want to taco about it. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're over here curious. Oh, boy. All right, so... What, uh, where is it that you guys want to touch down then? By the water? Not by the water? There's only one little part of water, and that's like right here. I don't know. It looks suspicious. It's right there next to the dead camp. Yeah. It's that, probably dead, dead water. <laughs> I'm thinking what? right there in the middle, wide open area, there's like a flattened road. We'd have views north and south. I'm thinking think off can, the road. I think we can all agree shit's going to come from the dead camp. We just need to accept it. <laughs> so... <laughs> dead one. Oh, I kind I... of agree with hiding in the trees. I don't know oh. which trees, but hiding um, in the trees. So I'm at the top, uh, top northeast, sorry, northwest corner of the map. There's four trees. There's green, light green, light green, yeah. and uh, red. If we camp around those, we can make a little perimeter and have this this front here be the outside face. And actually, if we were really had some time, we could do get some brush from these dead camps, 
and barricade the sides on these sides to make kind of like a little small fence so they would stop like big animals and horses and stuff. Chrome could do that. You want to make it like difficult terrain. Yeah. Well, I mean, just blockade it if I could. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Well, there's a whole bunch of rocks all around here. We could build a stone wall, I guess. Yeah. But that seems really that time consuming. Way too much work. Yeah. So, what do you say? Like, we get stuff from the dead camp, and then whatever we can't get from the dead camp, we cut down, like, cut limbs off a tree or something? We could probably take it off from the dead camp. I mean, between Daniel and, and, and uh, Crone, they could get a lot done, I bet. We can use the uh, the ship to help barricade part. Yeah. Can we? We could probably we find our, limbs uh... in the dead camp also. Yeah. People limbs too, for scary effects. Wow. Hey, can we? What? We? I know. I know where that was going. <laughs> um, can we have our tents? Yes, but first, <laughs> I want you to put down a beat. Boom! 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 And layer token. There's your campfire. Oh. That's the middle of your I mean, camp. I mean, so you guys can, can place that. Let me, but you, you definitely need to tell me where to park the boat. Maybe the boat over here? And maybe we uh -huh. need the campfire by suggestion right here. And we can boat on this side. Yeah, try to hide. With the nose of the boat, oh, the tail of the boat here, and the nose of the boat here. So if the nose of the boat was facing 7 o'clock. And then if anyone wants to change that, just, just that's fine. I'm totally, I'm totally just making a suggestion here on this. Like that? Yes. yes. I mean, yeah, that's cool. That's fine, I guess. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> Okay, so the boat comes around and stops here and slowly dips down towards the earth. Where are you putting your ladder? I assume towards the campfire. Eudemus. There you go. That's fantastic. There you go. Crone thanks the ship for being such a good ship today. Really was a great ship. The eye on the sail shows happiness. And it lurches back and forth. Now you guys don't have six tents this time. You only have five. Because one is covered in icky, gooey stuff. I mean, the last happen. is in gasoline. And that is Granny's tent. It's still Aww. armed and dangerous. Not, I, I'm I'm hesitant. God, I'm hesitant. But um, Crone will let Granny share his tent if they need to. What? Oh, I'm no way. Serious. Love me. This girls, girls night out. She <laughs> hangs out with Kaulunt. Her legs, Her legs got booze. There know, you we'll, go. We'll, we'll play truth Crone's, or dare. Crone's right there. If it pleases the court. Sure. You guys all have tents. You can move around. Gasoline. We have nines. Ten. Hmm? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, before you guys, before you guys start moving around, you guys need to set up your tents. They're not actually where I have placed them. I cannot select any. Hmm. Is this how big they actually are? Yeah, they're pretty big. Gosh. Actually, Gosh. they're one, two. Yeah, they're they could they could put. Wow. Did not. Mm. These are like twenty feet long. They're very big tents. They spare no ex expense. Yeah, we just didn't believe it. Or maybe I should just pat one of these tents up or give it to Granny and I'll sleep with Chrome. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I was off that up okay. anyway. Could be a good move. All right. Does everyone have a tent they can move? Yeah. Okay. Can we get the boat to move, like, ten feet south? How do you uh, cock the tent? Sideways. It's a little um, tail. When you, yep. you click on an oh. icon at the very top, there's a little tail. When your yeah. cursor goes over that thingy. Got it. Yeah. Nailed it. Ace, it can't be stopped. Waves over at uh, Kaudun. Hey! Hey! Girls night out! Come on in! I'll let you give me a foot rub. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> nope, bye, Granny. Ah! There's a lot that's wrong. Hmm, hmm. All right, remember, where you're putting your tokens is where you're going to be actually on the map, so be very careful if you move your token around. Can How you? are the... Uh... Go ahead. Huh? I was going to say, Kalu would Kylo. like to investigate the dead camp. Okay. Uh, one second. Is that where you guys want your tents? Are you having them perfect? Yes. Granny, get undercover. I'm with uh, Kalu, man. Girls night out. You're leaving your tent wine. all the way out there? Yeah, Granny. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't leave it in the room. One, one fireball, you're all dead. I'll save you. This uh, ombudsman right over here. Oh boy! I hate to say it, but player Crone gets it. Um, so that is where you want your tents, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right there. Okay, I'm done. Are you sure? I'll screw that. Now I'm done. Okay, I'm done. How are the acoustics? If I make sound, will it carry, or can I keep it quiet? Uh, it's a valley. If you make a large sound, it'll make a, a large reverb. sound and a reverb. But it's a... Uh, I mean, it's just like walking through a field, sparse trees. There's just no... Not a lot of grass at all. All right, so your tents are locked in. Um... Karu and Kailu need to roll a perception. Perception or investigation? Perception. I'm horrible at that. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm perfect. Karu, you notice that there's little bones everywhere, and they're not like chicken bones. They're bones of people who tried to camp there before, probably. Oh my crap. And okay. you can you can see that there's it's what look to be like long pebbles. They are really just old, old bones. Mixed in she with the hates, dirt. She hates to do this. She hate, grabs up a metacarpal bone, a little finger bone. And she hits up her super cook powers. Uh, number three, advantage on identifying qualities of ingredients. So she starts chewing on the bone. <laughs> Investigation or nature check to find out how old is this bone. That bone, let's see. Thank you for not even letting me rolling. I just want to pretend that this never happened. After she <laughs> I'm trying to think about which one. That's an interesting toothpick, Granny. I'm going to say investigation. Because you know it's a finger bone. 23! Oof! Alright, so you can tell that the bone in particular that you picked up. Do you pick up any other ones? No, she's, she's a one bone a night kind of girl. Okay, so <laughs> the bone that you picked up is very old. Like, it's probably been there for 60-some-odd years. So it's bleak. Part, part of it's been eroded away just with everything. It's kind of odd that there aren't any 
bite marks other than your own. But, uh, yeah. He spits it out. Tells, uh, Kaolunt what we know so far. I lost my pun. I thought of a pun and then I forgot it. Oh, that's a real skeleton chew. Ah. Uh -huh. She's got uh -huh. a bone to pick. Granny was bone under a lucky star. Aww. Your followers, are you bringing Princess Mittens anywhere? Is she coming to the camp or staying on the boat? Oh, she's like, hanging out with Crone. Okay. Like, gotta stay close. That could be dangerous out there. All right, and then Crow, what do you have him doing? Sooning after legs. Oh my god. He's gathering firewood. Okay. Right, he's getting wood, all right. He's gonna be over with the uh, with Granny gather because he sees wood on the ground he's over here. Out with <laughs> I just call it what it is. Uh, Keru says, "Ah, Crow, I see that you're stoking the fires. Nice." He has uh, no idea what you mean, so he's just giving you this weird look, like, "Yes, okay." Firewood <laughs> gathering. Yes, Crow has pitched right. his own tent. <laughs> he still does not get that reference either, so he's just confused. He would. Uh, ha. I don't have any of Okay. Uh, what do you guys do now? You can investigate or look around more. Uh, I'll have a look at this pond. So, I mean, Crone's got I won't any, get too uh, close to shoulders. it. He's just gonna. He's gonna Ironically, walk in. go ahead. Uh, Keru gets even not closer to the pond. And Kalun, between her and the pond and herself. All right, I need everyone. To roll initiative. Oh, oh my god. god. You know so what? Better can, now one than thing, when we're sleeping. Can one thing help me with this? So I was going there to roll survival in the area I to did. start looking around me for the stuff. Can I get us a, a surprise round? Or a, a not be surprised round? Mm. Not be surprised round. With a high enough roll? I was going to roll survival. Uh... I don't know if we're going to be ambushed or not. I I don't Which... think that a surprise round can happen because we are... these two walk too close to a Jabaco. Oh. Which you oh. know about, yeah. yeah. I don't we are the exactly ones being surprised. Ideas. Yeah. So my hope was to uh yeah spare them from being surprised, but good luck, guys. Bye, well. Bro. It's good knowing you guys. Good, good, good campaign. Because Cro no, no, no. because it's, Crone it's, it's, is there, and he's watching the whole thing, and Crow also is right there watching you two pass by this tree, which then suddenly moves towards you guys. Um, it's okay. There is no surprise round for the bad guy. I'm with it. Always check the red trees. Yep, that's actually what I was going to do was a history on the trees near us and before I could initiative. Oh, yeah, I just realized there's one near us. Yep. The camp. And it's right in the water. Chewbacca, right there. Yeah, Chewbacca. Most of you guys have run into one. Fun times. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what it does do is it, where is its root? There it is. If I paste this into objects and tokens, will it paste into the right layer? Ah!
There. That's... Yeah, 15 feet. Okie dokie! And then... Blood tree! Blood tree, she shouts. <laughs> Welcome back! Alright, what happened? I'm dead? No. Phew, good. I'm just clicking away trying to make this, uh, let's see, I want to descend. Legs has her turn first. Legs! All right. Do I know what's going on with them, considering how far away they are? You can you can hear Granny and Kailun, or at least I assume you can hear them scream. If not, then you at least hear Crow go, "What the fuck is that?" Okay. Wow. Foul language. Um. <laughs> He's never seen one long. before. Above game, do I know if these trees are afraid of fire? Mm -hmm. mm. From your last time, uh, who here did not go to the Iron Blood Cave? Me. I think it'd be pretty much everyone, but Daniel and Ron. Kairu was there. I was. I was at the Crone. cave. Granny yeah, had gone. The tree. Then you would remember that fire did a lot. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I am going to do some prestidigitation if I can. First, let me take my movement here. Get myself uh, closer. Oh, no. oh. Yeah. No, no, no. Right there. And then press the digimitation, some fire between them and the tree. Mm. No, I'm not close uh, enough. Well, also it is it doesn't have any eyes. <laughs> it well, that's would what I'm not. Saying. Like, how afraid of fire is it? Good son of bitch. All right. Um, did we start our fire? I don't think you guys had a chance. It's like we all settled in, and then all of a sudden, me and Kalun said, "Hey, let's explore." We were looking for wood, in fact, looking at crow. Like, okay. do you need fire for something? I was going to throw a fire between them and the tree. Oh. But if that's not going to work, I am going to shout some vicious mockery at the tree. Yes. If you want And puns. tell it its mother smells of elderberries. Say it means to leaf. Wisdom. How Psychic. smart is the tree? <laughs> no, it's, it's bite, not very... Bite. Oh, oh, it Those got 15. Shit. Damn. Oh, wait, it, that goes against mine, doesn't it? Uh, whoever's rolling is the winner. All right. So, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it definitely doesn't affect it. Okay. Well, you know what? Fuck me. It's, uh, I took my movement. That's it. The tree doesn't understand the words that you are saying. And shakes it off like it's leaves. Oh, shake it off. Now someone's getting punched. <sighs> um, the Jibako in question decides to use its roots to attack. Which I think I said that before, but it's going to... Oh, well, you guys are pretty close, actually. Five feet, five feet, branch, branch, can that branch? Is that 15 or I can't see? It's going. That's five. Ten. Yes. Five, ten. Yeah. 
It's gonna branch slam grandma. Wow, no! Does oh it hit think... you? Uh, she was having no armor whatsoever. Uh, 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 dexterity is uh, zero. Uh, wearing clothes. It's, it's, it's just a hit. She's it hits old, you. Feeble. If it hits you, you take two damage. Gotcha. Um, let's see. Vampiric root strike. Oh, vampiric. Uh, yeah, it's a vampire tree. This might be a tasty one to eat, Russell. Just saying. Done. Okay. Then you I'll say it twice, but all bark and no bite. <laughs> All right. There's rules against that. Vance, does an 11 hit you? And does a 10 hit you, um, Karu? Yes, I'm 10 is exactly my armor class at this moment. My armor class is 12. Okay, so you take four piercing damage, and the Jabako is still at full health. So, so a total of six damage. <laughs> now it is Crone's turn. Let's fix that full health problem. Um, quick measurement. Fun. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. Um, okay, so Crone is going to bonus action rage, which is awesome. Happy, happy, fun, fun. Then he is going to with... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. It's Charger. It's Charger. I'm just saying it's Charger. It's so that. from 15 away. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're going to go for the plus to the damage roll. Uh, okay. I don't think I could push it away. Just looking at it. It's, it's rooted in place. Yeah, it's rooted. So, unless that would, like, one-shot it. No? No. Okay. So, we're going to add there. He's going to run up to it with his big angry Kenobo. Um, no bow he didn't. I want to run <laughs> over here, though. All right, All right. Oh, that works. Nice of them. And then I'm going to kind of bash it. All right. Play that beautiful bean footage. Okay, yes. That hits it. And I'll get a plus five to this damage roll as well as the... Uh, so nine plus two for rage, 11, 16 for that hit. 16, all right. Um, second attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he does not hit. So you go in for your Maybe first swing. Something. You mm -hmm. the uh, the Kenobo crunches into the bark. You can see there's little blood spatter of sap and blood oozing from the impact. And as you try to pull it back and swing away, you're just kind of stuck there pulling at it. Oh, it sure. is uh, it is kind of stuck in the tree, and with each pull, the tree is very noticeably in agony. Oh, beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm cool with that. So, is is there? We'll take an action next turn to free it. Um, it'll be free by next action. Of me pulling but on it, or just the tree will it, like bleak it out um so you'd have to make a i'm going to say that you're going to need to make a successful attack to dislodge it okay the re okay so then here's the reason why i ask um if i were to let go of it until my next turn by the end of it would i i mean is there like a risk of losing my things that look like because i could just also take my reaction for sentinel if they attack any of my partners and throw punch him in the face. Um, if you let go of the, it's it's lodged in the tree. It's not gonna be able to eat it. It doesn't have like muscles to like pull the. It's just lodged in the tree. Is it something that I would get some of my bonus action reaffixing like like my grip to it next turn, and then the attack action is the breaking it free? Yeah, you could do that. that Makes sense. Okay, so then for this moment, seething. Crone lets go, cracks his knuckles, and waits for it to touch either of his two caster friends. 
And it All will. Right. And it might, might not. Uh, we'll see. Maybe not. It it doesn't. It, it really doesn't have a lot of intelligence. It's got a lot of wisdom. It, yeah. It also right? doesn't really. It just rolled really high on the wisdom there. <laughs> if you mouse uh, over it, you can see. Obi Wan Kenobi told me there's no such thing as luck. It's a it's a plus negative one. That's a pretty big mm -hmm. negative one. Yeah, so big. Yeah. Kailutes, your turn. Crow went looking for wood. And he was pining for legs, and that's pretty sultry. I'm wow. Done. Yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm stumped for any more. I'm just done. Oh, my God. God. You've really got good roots for these jokes, tell you what. I've got to leave. Well, while the tree is all bark, I am mostly bite. I'm a bite this root. Maple. Oh, son of a bitch. Maple not. That was very sappy. It was a corny <laughs> joke. Oh my goodness. I don't know if saying she's blue would work, but red would. <laughs> That's a good... Yeah, that hits the root. And... <laughs> That's kind of an oaky taste. <laughs> 1d4 damage. Well, ding a 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 One. All right, let's see what you get. Ringworm. <laughs> Please. Again. Tuberculosis. Oh. Elm disease. Uh, you have gained immunity to charmed. Yay. Cool. Crone now knows his powers are useless against Vanth. <laughs> wow. Oh, honey, don't kid yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoops. Um, Vance, yes, it's still your turn. Misty step. Ooh, nice Ooh. one. Oh, geez. I, I forget how to measure it and then move at the same time. Oh, uh, you uh, get off the uh, upside down comb. Go back to the arrow pointy thing, click on your person, and as you drag your person, hit the right button. That upside down comb is a ruler, Russell. Oh my god. <laughs> I think it's a, I thought it was like Q or something. Am I crazy? Yeah, it is. It is Q. Okay, I can't get it to work for me. <laughs> Can I okay, I'm Are just I, okay. I'm just gonna measure it out. Five. Oh no! What I do? Oh no! Where, where are you? I I did yeah. DOS exit four twenty. Oh no! Yeah, Wait, no, I it picked me 20. out earlier. I mean, row twenty. It it did that to me earlier for no he reason. Said you said 420. Yeah. So I'm over here now. Yeah, my bad. Okay. Uh, that cool. was a mistake. Um, the tree is rooted in place, right? The tree is. The roots aren't. The roots burrow under the ground. Do we know how far they can reach? They can move. <sighs> Three ducks. Three ducks. 20, 20 feet. <gasps> in a turn. Okay, they, they, yeah, they could reach our camp. I was going to say, if we can just leave the tree, it can be a perimeter defense. But no, if it's going to hit the camp, no, it needs to go. Well, it's, they can move 20 feet in a turn to a maximum of 60 feet away. Roses are red. Healers go, oom, um, if we don't get past these monsters, we are all doomed. 
Indeed, Arena. Sorry, that was a waste of time. Oh, so what you're saying is, on one side of the road is the dead road, and on the other side of the road is the living road. That exactly. makes a lot of sense now. And if we just get away from the, the tree, well, we have some perimeter defense. I wish I... someone would have mentioned that earlier. Yeah, being the oldest and wisest in the group, you know. <laughs> no, I, I, I thought that was Crone said that earlier. Oh. <laughs> hmm. What are you guys gonna do then? Is your is that what you want for your turn, Kylan? Oh yeah, I'm I'm done. I'm spent. All right, Daniel, you're up. Okay, I hear a racket happening, so mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, take off running. Uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And that put me there, so I'm going to run some more. 5, 10, 15, 20, you 25, 30. <laughs> and God. I guess I'm done there. Cause I had to use my action to dash. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Carry on. Karu. Karu, you moved your token. Actually, I was right there? Yes. Okay, sorry. I, I, was, I was playing around, but I was right in between these two little guys, little dog bastards. I moved five feet. Boop! Getting an attack of opportunity from this guy right here. It's 11 oh, my crap. He well, does. Well, also... In response to that, there goes Sentinel. Well, hold on. Uh, uh, four piercing damage regains its hit points equal to the damage that its root inflict. Needle. So you you feel the needly attack hit you, Karu, that do four piercing damage, and it regains four damage. I've subtracted. As her action, she reaches into her bag of colding and pulls out a five-pound bag of salt and shoves it, if all possible, into the opened cursed Kenobo wound of the tree, where the Kenobo is stuck. You're literally hoping, putting salt in the wound. Putting salt in the wound and making uh, its retrieval out of the hardened surface a little easier. Um... So make a melee weapon attack against the attacking creature, Crone. Okay. What is this one? Yes, I have to do throat punch. Ooh. Alright, that hits. Nine, 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 nine! It is still up. Uh... It looks worse for the wear. And you were saying you want to do what was it again? I'm sorry. I shove a five pound bag of salt into the opened wound of the Kenobo in the trunk of the vampire tree. Oh. Um. What would that do? I don't know. Whatever it does, she's going to spend the next 20 five feet running away from this place. All right, so salt. I rolled really shitty on the, the constitution roll. I mean, if so it's, if it's all the water from the tree, maybe it makes it roll a roll a 1d4, please. It does three points of damage because you rub salt in its wound. Nice. At that point, she uh, shouts over her shoulder, You're on your own! And lands right here. Getting another opportunity of attack from the root. Oh my goodness. Plus 10. It misses. You couldn't save Ooh. me on that one. Well, no, That's cool. That's cool. I don't know what to save you on that one. And done. Alrighty. Legs, it's your turn. 
I didn't put crow in here. Shoot. Alrighty. Um, well, it looks like everyone's backing out a good bit, so I am going to move slightly just meow. And if the tree moves towards the party, I shall let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do I actually have like a weapon weapon? I do. I know I do. Oh, you know what? I'll region rings it. I'm going to hold nice. my shooter stance and wait. And my held action is that if it moves towards us, I shall shoot it. All right. And I you're doing that? Nuts. Okay. All righty. Cool. And that's the, uh, this guy? This, this tree. The tree? Oh, yeah, we had that, yeah, this is the tree, though, right? This, this right here is the tree. The tree itself doesn't yeah. necessarily move, but the roots do. Yeah, no, I'm going for the fucking tree, because if we kill the tree, I think the roots are going to fall with it, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if your trigger is for the tree to move, then it's No, no, fine. no. My trigger is for the roots to move. So, yeah, that first root that's closest to me, if gotcha. that one moves, I'm hitting the tree. Okay. Is that your turn? That yep. Okay. Uh, is the tree's turn. AC 18. Oh, that's not what I planned. Something has pickled. Everybody, something has pickled. It can reproduce. <laughs> no one told me it can reproduce. It needs to stop doing photosynthesis. This one attacks. Oh, nope. That one nope. attacks. That one attacks. Nope. And Bark Bite can't reach you, but Branch Slam can. Uh, nope. 14, no. Fuck this You're tree. holding your own against this tree. Whew. Fuck this tree. <laughs> All right. Uh, it is Crone's turn. So... You know what? Crone just um he he lets his his thing stay in there for a minute. It clearly hurts the tree. He's not the tree's not happy about it. He instead, I guess, has his prayer beads out and his fist. And he's gonna punch the tree. Punch okay. That hits. Awesome. So eight. And then one more time. No, maybe, but probably not. At least he didn't break his hand. Nope. 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 Almost. Okay. But no. Um, give me one second here. I think I have something for this. Yeah, focus in. Um, I'm going to. Have we hit the tree already once? Yeah, looking up. A, uh, how many key points are you putting into your I'm trying to attack. kind of guess the tree's AC if I want to do two or three, because I'm looking up over the, the fight, but I don't see anybody. Okay. Um, I'll spend three. Oh, are you sure? No. Do it, man. I have not changed the tree since your first encounter. I'm just letting you know that. Guys, should I make my attack roll 12 or 14? I don't know the first tree. 14! 14! Okay. I'll spend I'll spend two key points to make it a 14. Okay. Then it hits. Cool. Then as I can, I can do it again. I can hit with an extra 
<laughs> and attack because that one hits. Uh, let me read this one works real quickly. Yeah, unarmed strike. Okay. Um, that hits. But what was the damage for these? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, six plus two is eight. Eight plus two is so eighteen. And then this this third one just now uh, is accompanied with a key point spent. But nine. So nine, eight, and six plus 12, 20, 29. Oh. Well, if that's the case, then you continuously pummel the trunk of this tree. It's uh, very stiff but maneuverable kind of thorny bark opens mm -hmm. to reveal it's it's very <laughs> spiky mouth um but only only after you've pretty much punched it into submission it is for the most part at this point dead because you have punched through several layers of its bark into the heart of it and it's just gushing out this bloody sap onto the ground. So it's dead? Oh, dead or no? It's dead, dead. Can we I... lost our perimeter guard. Beaten it to a pulp. The roots uh, die uh, with it. I'll so guys, uh, we found some material to barricade with. That was a sticky situation, but I really feel we need to branch out. <laughs> Shall I make sure this thing's dead? Can this thing come back? Uh no, it, it's not a it's not a vampire vampire. How's it just, this? How's yeah. this? That's what it looks like. So it does have a lot of thorns on it. So it could be used to barricade. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> but really. Oh, you want to set it on fire? You can, no, you can set it on no, fire if you want. Silly. Okay. I'm being silly. But you have Crazy. firewood. No, it's, it's perimeter. I lodge my, I pull my Kenobo out. I find a hatchet and I start hacking this tree up. Yeah, uh, no, Chris I like question. this perimeter. Is that red tree where our tents are also a vampire tree? We're going to find out, but it's going to see me hacking its friend to pieces first and then decide if it wants to move or not. Okay. So when you guys walked by it, you were within 10 feet of it. It has, uh, Give me, give me a nature or history roll there, Karu. Uh, nature. 27. Nature. All right. You know that the tree has tremor sense. So it can sense if somebody walks close enough to it, it will try to devour whatever is, is making movement in the ground. The one next to us. So you guys have been walking all around that that big red one there, and it has done nothing. So it's not a Jabaco. It's yeah, like probably. one of the fake ones from the previous campsite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like the Jabacos hang out near water. Chewbacca. They drink a lot. Chewbacca would oh. hate this life day tree. There's five other red trees to check out besides the one that you killed and the one that's right next to your camp. For the record, I had it coming. Let's, let's all be honest. It, it, it that was that was deserved, right? We're not. What we're not was it wearing? <laughs> oh Jesus! Wow. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> you all saw that tree. You knew what Dark was going to happen. <laughs> Um, the tree was yeah, it, well, it was yeah, looking kind of sharp. <laughs> exactly. All it's right. thorn. So, um, yeah. Let's Is check crow... out these other trees. Hey, uh, like Crow, you suggest... should, you should. Go ahead. I would like to suggest we stay sixty feet away from all the trees. Well, I'm fine. And they can just, you know, they can kill anything that comes near us. 
Mm. I see you measuring that tree over there. I hate to break it to you, but your camp is too close to that tree to be 60 feet away. Okay, well, let's check out that tree. It leaves the other one alone. Crone's got his prayer beads after he's done hacking the tree up. Walking near any tree, he so well pleases. He feels very confident right now. It's like any of these other red trees looking thorny. They all look a little thorny. They all look a little thorny? Yep. Well, dang. There's two different versions of the tree. There's the one that's an actual Jabaco, and then there's the one that imitates the Jabaco so nobody will hurt it. Jeez. That's what I asked at our last campsite. Mm -hmm. I'm going to firebolt this one that's below the ship. (laughs) I'm not trying to catch it on fire. Just, you know, see what it does. I'll walk up next to Give me a spell attack. And that's the story of how we spooked the ship. Roll, roll some damage. Thirteen fire. Damn. Damn. When you hit it with the fire, the mouth breaks apart, and you can hear oh. uh, a horrid scream, kind of hissing noise coming from it, because fire hurts. Fire very bad. Hey guys, I found one! Ten points! Well, that's unsettling. We need to sow some shade at this tree. Three roots pop up. It's feeling around, it doesn't know where you are. Can we run up on it? We yeah. can. I, I'm staying safely away. Depends on what you want to do. So can we can we like look to the range and go kind of like shh as the melee kind of creep up before initiative starts? Remember, it's tremor sense. So not yes. talking isn't going to do a heck of a lot. We know when the melee get near enough, it'll start moving, and then the the range have their cue and her. Sure, whatever you want to do. Um, you you're just sh- range it to death. Well, I kind of feel for Daniel being stuck with the. Uh... Yeah. That dash action moment, so I think they're safe. I mean, thing, right? Y'all y'all can kill it. I I'm not gonna cry about it. Well, I'll go. So Kylie, you took your your turn. Daniel. Uh okay. you're you're up. Uh five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Let me see here. You have some range capabilities, right? Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking frostbite. Mm-hmm. You can throw rocks. Frostbite. Let's see. What's the range? 60 feet. That's within 60 feet, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's within 60 feet. Um, so I'm going to cast frostbite on the tree. Do it. We. Uh, DC Kanto. Whoa! Uh-huh. It, rolled, it rolled a nineteen. Holy crap! Decided it was. Fun. Maybe it's all the fire. Yeah, it's because it's on fire currently. Yep. Uh, anything else you want to do? You have bonus action. Um, let's see. I don't think I have a lot in the name of bonus. Uh, nah. I'm good. Crow's turn. He moves up there. He goes, I got your back. That's not my Karu. back. Okay. Karu's turn. <laughs> Go, Karu. Karu, from a good 55 feet away, attempts to uh, decrease its tremor sense ability that senses vibration in the ground yep. by throwing yep. pots and pans at it. Oh. Okay. Uh, oh. Think of your Here's concussive one. sound. Again, a thunderbolt hits it right in the trunk. Maybe, hopefully, I don't know deafens it. I don't know. Constitution save DC 16 or take one thunder damage. 
Did you say you're what you wonder about thunder? Wow. Wow. It takes a damage. But I'm hoping maybe with all that uh, concussive thunder, it will dampen or deafen its tremor sense. I don't know. Good luck with that. Again. Disadvantage on its attacks. Okay. So it now has disadvantage on its attacks. Is that your turn? Yes, that's it. Legs, it's your turn. Okay. Is the tree near me doing anything? No. No, it's, it's being chill? Mm-hmm, it's a tree. Alrighty. Um, I am going to scoot on over y'all. And since that was all of my movement, I will do as a bonus action, gin inspiration to crone. Yay. 1D. Ooh. Nice. You can do it. And that's it for me. Alrighty. Uh... You all are within 60 feet. Probably not the best idea. Damn it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, I forgot where it was supposed to go. I think there. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Ka-chow. And that. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, so uh, I assume Vance and Daniel. Vance, you have more than eight. Daniel, I know, has more than two. Yep. You can remember the last time that you, you fought these things. Clearly, you have gotten better. Crone, it's your turn. Crone, um, he's feeling pretty powerful, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to run all the way here. I'm sure this thing will try to attack it. Attack him, rather. Um, yes, it will. And it misses. Nice. That also means... It doesn't have a reaction for K or Daniel if they want to run. Um, it's true. So Crone is going to so big and scary. Let's go tree chopping. Oh boy. A crunch. That hits. Cool. Eleven. Monkey dokey. A crunch. Ugh. That does not hit. Um. Yeah, we'll spend two more key points again. Make it 14. You also have inspiration. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's 1d8 now? Mm -hmm. Yep, 1d8. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. That, that hits. For 13. And then Ooh. unarmed strike. Nice. That hits. For six more. And it's dead. So you thwack it with your Kenobo. Chum, chum. That's right. Yeah. Crunching through the bark. To the left. Crunching through the bark. Bloody sap everywhere. And then you finish it off with one bunch right through. And it goes straight through the bark to the other side. The tree kind of convulses slightly and slumps. If I were to fourth wall moment this, I would reference Ark. <laughs> and that's how you build a thatch house! 
what? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You do punch trees. Now my fists are parasaur. Oh boy. Uh, we T-Wrecked them. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to the ship and find me a model who's Triceratopolis. Have you relapsed, buddy? Are you back what? in the ark? No. <laughs> no. No. No, I have other I have other terrible game relapses. No. <laughs> so anyway. you guys now have two trees down. Are you checking any other trees out or are you two thinking trees. <laughs> are you thinking Every that tree. you're dead? You're gonna. I'd I'd like to leave the rest because they would form a perimeter if something oh. sneaking up on us. So I would oh. like to look at this tree, the the furthest southern tree that is south of Granny's tent that might be in sixty feet. That one. Okay. How are you gonna look at it? From very, very from from sixty feet away. <laughs> from sixty feet away, when you look at it. It looks like a tree. It looks like all the other trees. I have an idea. Dang it. Is it Firebolt? I'm going to pick up a rock and I'm going to toss it near the tree. Uh, give me a ranged attack. That's kind of smart. I like that. Actually, I feel like I'm close enough that I can, like, uh, frostbite it. Let me uh, double check here. Yep, I can frostbite it. Actually, I'm close enough that it should be picking up on me. Mm, they usually wait until you're much closer. Get you all nice and close. All right. Trap. Usually. Nice. Oh, I'm going to take a step back and um, leave I'm going to frostbite leave, it. Leave Caro there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Heads up, Granny. And Frostbite. DC 13? God, what is wrong with these trees? It does nothing. And it does not react. Because it's it missed. It really was all bark and no bite. Okay, I'm just a file bolt it. I got a range of 120 feet. Don't don't fire bolt it, because if it's an innocent tree, you're just going to set it alight. Okay. Tony looks at Daniel at the phrase "innocent tree" like he's confused, because he just is like <laughs> pony swap two trees. It misses. Oh my god! Can I frostbite it again? Uh, does anyone else want to take actions? At this point, can I just? Uh, I oh, do. Go ahead. Uh, Karug has got this. Keru grabs a small uh, sheaf of silk from one of her kimono and hands it to Daniel and says, hold on to this. If okay. it comes after me, pull. All right. She starts walking. 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 Mm, and walking. then uh, by the time she gets just 25 feet, her kimono is already un unwrapped and she's now walking in her pajamas. Oh, oh like, pull her back. Oh, God. I have a javelin. It can hit uh, her, the tree, or something. Just pull her back. She's got sandals and uh, bloomers that start at her kneecaps and go all the way up to her neck. So, how close do you want to be there? I'm right there. It's still not doing anything. She turns around her back to the tree and says, Nope, it's just a tree. Do a nature check. <laughs> Duck. I mean, you can also you throw a stone. Oh, throw you throw a javelin. I miss. Yep. Duck. Yes. Goose. Donkey. <laughs> Donkey. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Hmm. Oh yeah. Anyone That's else want to want to want to try something? Throw a rock. More javelins. I got more fire bolts. Well, somebody do something. Oh, Crone, you hit it with a. 
Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey, miss. Did you the hit javelin me? hits. Oh yeah. Let's see. Uh, Did you hit me? No, but uh, roll. Roll a one d four, and if you get a negative one, you hit Karu. Oh. Uh. Not a negative Ooh. one, just a one. But you didn't. Huh. So you didn't hesitate. Yay! Okay. Peru, after that very near miss, looks at the Kalut and says, All right, if you fall asleep first, I'm putting your hand in water. <laughs> what? Um, so your javelin, javelin hits, yes. and you can see the tree react. It's vampiric mouth and furls and... Oh, my shit. Okay, so that being said, where is my other javelin at? Because I'm not getting that one. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Gesundheit. Cause, yeah, Gesundheit. Gazoon tree. There. And it it pops up. These roots, these two roots are squiggly and looking for Crone. This one was waiting. Waiting for Karu to just get a little closer. Yeah. Um. So we are back to uh Daniel, because you use your fire bolts. Uh, I'm going to start pulling Karu back. Pull. Yoink. Pull. Yoink. Attack of honor opportunity, though. Oh, no! Okay, got it. Uh, got me. Four piercing damage. Everyone looks for the rest, and he looks at Kalu and like, do we, do we want to kill it? This one. I mean, Granny could just move her tent. And the ship is floating off the ground, so. Yeah, it won't be able to reach you if you move your tent just ever so slightly out of its range. I've lost the ability to move my tent. What is this world coming to? Stop sulking and move the tent. Hold on. She rushes up against it. I can't move it. There you go. Huge. Oh, done. No, it's not. That's not far enough. What the hell? Ah, she pushes it right in front of... She, she right there. People will have to jump on her tent to get on and off of the ship. You could spin it and... Uh, all right. There you go. Did you say spin? Oh, okay. Why did I do this number? Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see the green bar above uh, Keru. It looks full, but she's actually been hit a couple times. I don't know why it's not dropping down. It doesn't it look looks, full to me. Yeah, I was oh. going to say. All right, uh, to me, it looks full. It looks like it's 21 out of 35. That's correct. Thank you. To me, it looks 35 out of 35. It's weird. But when I click on her, you got those little uh, circles. Mm -hmm. That's 21, yes. Hmm, that seems to be a little buggy. Yeah. So, you guys aren't going to engage with it anymore? I am very happy to leave it there so no one sneaks up from us for, uh, for us from that way. Okay, everyone all together in that? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> I feel a okay. little uneasy leaving it there, but you know, maybe we can cut it down in the morning. Why don't we just cut it down right now? I mean, why are we waiting? So it protective you can right. you can hear its little roots burrowing, looking for you guys at this point. Oh my god, we should just kill it. No, kill it, and eventually, kill after about an hour, they go away. Now, think about if somebody was coming up the road. They'd start screaming, letting us know all about it, because they're attacked by our friend, she says, pointing with her scarred and bloody arm, the vampire tree. Yeah, but what if it's a single mother with five children? And she shouldn't be running through vampire trees. What, what exactly. is she doing on the road at night? I don't know. 
Uh, if you encounter a woman at night with five kids, you need to run. It's and ghost what was she kids. wearing? <laughs> I mean, so Crone is absolutely correct according to all Far Shore lore. If you find a woman with a child at night in an inopportune place, it's most likely a trap. Yeah. Just, just Bad saying. Yep, she's either going to turn into some skeleton woman or the baby's some sort of something, uh, moth larva, who, who knows? <laughs> Demon parasite slowly draining its host. Yep, it could be anything. Gonna lay eggs in your brain. Now, the fire how, before it lays eggs. How hot would the mother be exactly in this scenario? Pretty, pretty hot. Wow, okay, it depends yeah, on the temperature it's... outside. I mean, is I would, it like winter? <laughs> I would pull my car over and say hello. <laughs> and she'd pull her car over and say, and devour your soul. Oh my god. All right. Yeah, that. Ah. Crow continues oh, yeah. to gather firewood in the areas that he knows are safe. Um. Okay. He still has not taken any kind of levels in Obusan because you guys need to kind of tell him what that's about. So he's kind of so just it. derping around. I figure we had to waste the bureau for him to actually get any training done. Probably. Unless you guys try to teach him something that his class would know that you know. Oh. That would work. Yeah, you hey, could Rube. teach him medicine, couldn't you? Yes, because I don't know a hey. damn thing. Not Anybody a have damn thing. Keru goes over to Crow and assists him with the logs. As she does so, she happens to bust open one of her dressings of the recent battle that she's recently had. Ah, she says in an exa exaggerated acting type. Those enemy has caused me physical pain, and I have to wait for a natural healing to heal me up. Ah, if only we had some kind of link to the greater powers that could heal my body. She goes, she goes walking off, but it's like at a hobble pace. Crow looks really bad. Like, feels, feels really bad. So he comes over to you and offers you <laughs> one of his healing potions. Jerry, yeah, what she the takes hell it. Was that path? Um, I take it back from her, and <gasps> I cast Lay on Hands. There you oh, go. healing potions is just, you know, a slab of cardboard compared to the fried bacon of the po natural power of the gods. I probably should change that to say he gave you a potion instead of he cloths one. Anyways, yeah, he he doesn't really he. Doesn't have lay on hands, so he's just kind of looking at you like, that's cool trick. Yeah, I don't get to use it very much. Because I feel like I'm more okay. useful when I'm hitting things. That's cool. How much you give me? How much you give me? Come on. I get you back to full health. How many points is that? Uh, 35 minus 21. 16! Alright, I gave you 16 points. Nice! Awesome. Anybody else? I'm good. Everyone's healed. I can do it, but yeah. Yeah, I took nothing. All right. Meanwhile, Princess Mittens is hanging out in one of the trees, much like a cat would. Mm. Um, I'll both the pond. It, nothing happens. It just sizzles. Um, okay. So, if you guys want to uh, give me some nature checks, you can get stuff from the trees that you killed. Nature checks or or books utensils. Yup. Twenty-seven. Uh, survival an option? Yes, nature? you can do survival as well. Oh, it didn't help me much this time. Okay, so let's see, Daniel, you get, where did my dice go? Oh, 
I found them. Especially from last time, you guys remember those needles were quite lucrative. Mm -hmm. Daniel, you got six of those tree needles, the vampiric thorns. Uh, Kailunt. You got ten. He rolled really well with these. You got twenty nine. Jeez. Um, Here, I'm going to use a different dice. Yes. I hope they're blue dice. Carrie, you got 40. That's 40 needles? Yep, 40 needles. And you also got um, three reams of the phylum of the tree, which is kind of like the meaty part. Uh, a lot of cultures use the phylum of the tree to make bread and all sorts of other stuff. It's not hard and crunchy like the bark. It's the edible part. God, everyone's going to have some fiber for breakfast tomorrow. Oh no, I said how many things that Kailun had got and I already forgot how many it was. Ten. I got a rock. No, it was more than ten. Oh god. Okay. Ten rocks. Oh shit, I'm gonna have to re-roll that. I will use d20s or 12s instead. Uh, 18 and 6 is 24. You got 24. 24 rounds. Uh, no, 24 of the vampiric thorn needles. Ooh, neat. Uh, Crone, you got 21. 21? Oh god, it's spreading. Wow, uh, legs, you got whatever 27 and 9 is, which is 37, 30, no, 36, 36. Mm -hmm. cool. 36 thorns. Thorny thorns um, of thorniness. Thorny, thorny. And also, uh, Daniel, you got one ream of the phylum. Okay. So that is that is what you guys got from that. Very lucrative. Yes. Nice. Uh, make sure you make a note of it because they're worth a lot of money. And you can make stuff out of them like blood arts. All sorts of things. Use them in trap nose bombs. All sorts of stuff. Okay. So... Now that you guys are done that, you guys have some camping to do. Gotta done. Make some dinner. The sun is now just caressing the horizon. It is it is just about set. The sky is all red and orange. Mostly red though. Do you cook anything special, Karu? We have a lot of spider meat. Uh, she tries her very best. If 
it has enhanced magical features, she'll let it flow. If not, she's going for like a nice buttery kind of crispy feel. Something uh, refreshing to uh, wipe away the grime and grit of a long day's travel. So like a butter braised and... Uh, butter braised? Kind of like crab legs with butter. Yeah. With spider legs. Butter. Light and fluffy. Um, yeah. If your party members want to help you with uh, making this. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you just need to be dexterous or be able to use kitchen utensils. And hey. then you, you might be able to help her infuse something extra into your food. I'm if dexterous. you mess it up, she will thwack you in the hands with her ladle. So watch I've out. I've got a high constitution and dexterity. Uh, <laughs> you, big guy, come on over here. Stir the spider legs. Legs? Legs is doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, ironically, I'm legs is help cooking legs. Legs is <laughs> helping to cook legs. So she wouldn't need my, advantage, my, uh, my help when I assist them, right? Because her assist wins. No, no, you still need to assist. Many hands make light work. There you go. That's a, that's a really good assist as well. Anyone else helping with the dinner preparation? I have very bad dexterity, so... Bring you guys into camp while you're doing this. Um, I tell you what, uh, with legs helping me, I got this one particular project where she has to pluck the spider hair from the hairy legs before we can crack it on open. Again, that might be slightly poisonous, I don't know. But I need another set of hands. She looks around, she looks around. You! Bird boy, crow, come over here. Help this lady. One of you guys hold the legs. The other one pulls the legs in the opposite directions, pulling apart, using teamwork to get the job done. Looking deep into it, maybe even touching fingers while rubbing mm -hmm. butter over the, the, the dead nids. Crow looks oh, the legs and like, is, it, is, is this uh, offensive? It's a needed, says Keiru. So Crow is trying to help, but he is very much meekly and very awkwardly messing up here and there, unfortunately. Hiru rolls her eyes, and in frustration she says, Take off your tunic! You gotta take your tunic off, man! God, how are you gonna hold on to spider legs with a tunic? Get your bare chest out here! He just, he looks at you and goes, but I don't want to take my tune I'm off. the cook, don't you question me. Start swearing, because this uh, is... Uh, give me an intimidation roll. Oh my god, I, you <laughs> know it. She looms her full six-foot height over top of him. Oh, oh horrifying, actually. Going full Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to take uh, an inspiration on that. This chicken is so raw, it wants to cross the road. Oh my god. Nice. <laughs> um yeah you're gonna have advantage on that one so he he immediately like feels so much smaller and he just kind of like yes ma'am yes ma'am right away ma'am and then takes his tunic off and he's just like very he he definitely looks like he's uncomfortable right now and he's yeah. just like he's holding a spider leg with <laughs> no top on and he's almost like shaking he's he's so awkward and scared right now oh my it's god worse. are you happy Kara? you're giving him ptsd Shh. as a splash of butter ladles his bare chest making him silky smooth in the dimming light of evening tide Wow. Uh, so the leg, the spider leg that he is holding is coated in butter as well as the rest of him. And he just kind of looks down and then looks up at the sky and goes, okay, this is real. This is happening. Now, Why if, you are not, if you are not Busan, you'd never be doing this. Just saying. What does being an obu said have to do with helping you cook? Don't you question my cooking, she says. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, Kalun is going to go talk to Legs and say, you should uh, clean him off. Legs is blushing furiously for both of them right now. <laughs> I, <laughs> meant prestidigi I meant prestidigitation. <laughs> 
Is, uh, did Crow hear you say that, Kylan? Did you make sure he heard, or was well, that secret? Is there an amplification spell you have, like a megaphone? <laughs> I think there is you something like that. Go that I do not have it. Get it off. That Crone could help you, uh, assist you scream through. Oh my god. I think that's thermaturgy, and I do not have it. Wow. If he heard you, he he's more of a Robin right now because he's also red right in the face. Oh, I was just making the legs. I wasn't. I wasn't okay, trying good. to. No. <laughs> he would just probably just stand there like a statue, hoping that people would just leave him alone for like another couple hours till he could just disappear into the the shadows, never to be seen or heard from again. Take pity on him. Just press digitation, clean whatever that is off. All right, I know I'm going to regret this, but how good does Crow's chest look buttered? <laughs> um, in, uh, the sun, uh, in the sunset. <laughs> okay, so he's definitely greased up, and he's also not a bad figure, but he's not exactly super buff. He's definitely more of a lean cut. Okay. He's but a lean like, cut of meat. Does like uh, like uh, overall on the like one to ten hotness scale, where is he falling? <laughs> oh, um, with the with the hmm. butter. Is he Ryan <laughs> Reynolds or is he Brandon Fraser? No, no, oh, he's not. That's so, that's like, difficult. Adrian, is it Brandon Adrian Fraser Adrian. from like when he was playing Tarzan? Or Brandon Fraser from the Mummy? Or Brandon Fraser now? I would no. say he's Brandon Fraser from Tarzan. I've never found Brandon Fraser hot. Like Adrian Brody. <laughs> I think Brody there was anybody. Totally Adrian Brody's hot. I don't okay. know. And he's I don't know. These are very yeah. specific people. Um, hey, can, Adrian can, can, Brody <laughs> is from um, Splice. I have not he seen He was that. the male scientist. Um, he was also in... Give me some more um, actors. Okay. Okay. Legs, <laughs> legs. Me, me Adrian pulse. Brody, if the Oni at the blacksmith can be Aubrey Plaza. And that's what we're going for. Ooh, <laughs> I love <laughs> Aubrey Plaza. You get off, you dirty mugger! I mean, no, Russell, you can't. You can't have okay. her, too. That's not... I'm a yeah. I, I know who Brandon Fraser is. I do not know who any of these other people are. <laughs> she parks and wrecked me. Oh, uh, she's, oh she's my great. God. Aubrey Plaza is amazing. I would, oh, I would on. definitely. Here we go. All right, visit, I got a photo uh, of Adrian Brody. Okay. Both in the chat, and then we can go from there. It looks like a penis. <laughs> That's a different picture. <laughs> there you go. Um. Oh, he's got a. He's got one of those cute faces. Yeah. That's, yes. He, he looks kind of like him. Yep. But yeah, not the like shirt on. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. No, she's uh, she's leaving it. She's yeah, not gonna clean them all. Nope. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. She's uh, she's stealing glasses. <laughs> Johnny Hawkins. Wow. <laughs> so Crow's just kind of like there, his shirt tied around his waist as he's holding a piece of the spider leg. He's like, "What do I do with the spider leg now that?" Now that it's coated in butter, he's so defeated right now. He's just like, I need to get this done. Aww. And he hands it. He hands it to Karu, and then he kind of like looks over his shoulder and is like, "No one's watching me, right? No one." He doesn't know. Good. <laughs> Karu focuses completely on the summation of the meal. We're gonna throw in a few uh, bay leaves and some leaves of the vampire trees after it's sautéed and uh, caramelized in its own spider gel. Ooh, She's fancy! Yeah, this is sounding good. That's very fancy. All right. So uh, her assistants aided in the worst part of the gathering and uh, preparing of the ingredients. But now she goes ahead and uses her special culinary tools to <gasps> whip up dinner. There you go. Nice. And since you had so much help, 
that was also very helpful. You are able to imbue it with... Where did my Mana Weaver thing go? There it is. Sure-footedness. You have advantage on strength and dexterity saving throws made against you that would knock you prone. You do not suffer movement penalty for difficult terrain. And you will have that Sweet. until breakfast. Sweet. So that is your sated buff for tonight. We're so buff. There's really not an icon for sated on here. Gosh darn. I really need to make my own icons. These really don't make a whole lot of sense. Like, what is a wrench supposed to mean? Hmm. Sated. <laughs> Construct. There. Ooh. Repaired. Needs repair. I'm gonna put a big bucket next to Kru because she's filled with the milk of human kindness. Uh, oh, that is milk foul. anyway. On a scale of one to never again in your life, can you never again in your life? Say that? <laughs> okay. It is milk that has curdled. It is he thick needs some and milk. lumpy. Okay, I thought I thought that was bad. Vant, they cost you zero dollars to not say that. <laughs> yeah. It cost me zero dollars to say it. Oh, gotcha. Good at <laughs> the math. And you're no longer raging, correct? Oh, yeah, no. Alrighty. Ah. Good cooking. All right, so mm -hmm. now you guys are done dinner. You have to figure out who's going to take watch and who isn't. Um, It'll be... In four hour stretches, or it could be in two hour stretches. It can be with can... two people or one, it does not matter. But you guys have to figure it out. I can help cover the last four hours. I think we should each do two again, just because, in case of things. Well, if we do four, no one loses out any, uh, any above game effects, and we can have two rolls for, for shift comfortably. Okay. If that is what you want to do. Well, actually, you, Vanth, and and Kai, Kairi were all casters. Daniel has spell slots, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. He all didn't use all... any, I don't think, just the on hands. Yeah. No, I didn't. And he... Would you get that back in a short rest, Daniel? Pretty sure. Let me uh, double check here. <laughs> La da 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 da. Way on hands. What if we did? What were your? What was your thoughts, Pixie? Because we got we got five of us. Cover covers eight hours or six hours. You can also have Crow take watch too if you want. Yeah, I say we have you know Crow take whatever one of the watches on his own, and then we could each do the others. Okay, I'm with it. Just put Crow at the back of the, back of the list by the early morning. Okay. I am casting hypnotic pattern into my ring before I go to sleep. Alrighty. So yeah, I do get those points back after a long rest. Cool. What can you say? So how do we uh how do we want to do this? Do you wanna like roll it out or do you wanna do you and Daniel and then that's kind of what I was wondering. Yeah. Um, what or we if, can just roll like a d6. What if Daniel stays awake for the first four with two of you. Okay. We'll just start there. So, do you want to do uh, legs and Daniel first? Yeah, sure. 
Okay. For the sake of uh, keeping the ball moving. That sounds good to me. Okay, Doki. All right. So the first is going to be Daniel and legs. Legs. Mm-hmm. For two hours or four? I think, I think we're doing two. a four, right? Oh, yeah, two. That's right. Yeah, two's good. Two's good. Okay. Okay. Two's fun. I have a plan for both. Mm-hmm. Crow's just going to sleep in whoever's tent this is. Crow's got extra room. He's in for the prize. That's mine. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to bunk with uh, Crow and Daniel and Mittens. Crow and. Thought that was Daniel's tent. Whoops. Yeah, mine's the one with Rocket. Margaret in it. God, Crow, clean yourself off. <laughs> I mean, he would go over to the water, but he's kind of a little not gonna. He wiped himself off after. It's only in the front of him. Right? Right? Yeah. Okay. Just took a few napkins. Yeah. Maybe a sock. Jeez. Okay. So, Daniel and legs. Two hours. Give me a perception roll for your time. I don't perceive shit. It's getting dark out. About all I noticed. Do some rolls. Do nothing happens, and you don't see anything, and you don't hear anything. You just know that it is getting dark. Very, very dark. Wow, is it dark? The first two hours go by, and nothing happens. Da na All right, who is next? Uh, that would be Daniel, and then what was it, Kylan? Yeah, I'll go. You mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Perception. Mm-hmm. Perception roll. Ah, I got a 15. Aha. Nice. You guys, you guys can see a whole bunch of nothing happening, but you do see that uh, one of the Chuboko, off in the distance, had to have been one of them, has speared a rabbit, and you can hear that noise. Oh, oh yeah, they nice. scream. Mm-hmm. But, but that's all that you hear. You can that's check it out or leave it alone. Uh... I feel pretty confident that was one of the trees. What about you? Uh, how confident am I that that is one of the trees? With a rabbit and nothing more. Mm-hmm. That's up to you. Okay, I'll go to the ship over here. You you don't see anything for like 120 feet almost. It's all clear. Yep. It must have been a Jabaco like way over here. Like way over on the other side of the map. <laughs> Okay, uh, I was going to cast uh, Foxfire 60 feet away, but if I'm not going to see anything, then nah. Yeah, it definitely sounded far away. Let's not give away our position. <laughs> All right. So next, who is up? Uh, Kiru, give a thought. 
It would yep, be Crow yep, and yep. Kru. Or Crone and Crow. Whatever Kru wants to be. Uh, yeah, either one. Uh, I vote uh, Crone and Crow. Kru will pick up the rear after a good night's rest. Sounds okay. Good. Sounds I should about that so that the last so the last check's what I'm worried about. I'd rather have two players on that. So I was on the same page actually. Okay. So we'll let Daniel go to sleep. Crone wakes up. And is it perception you said? Yes, perception. I'm up. So Crone, went... Crone with a stick to wake him up. Okay. Wake <laughs> up. Crone gets up. He's he's pretty pretty comfy. He's been hard stick, angry ground. Uh what? he and Crow. Bing bang. You don't really see anything. Nothing really is happening. Um, there is some noises off in the distance, but they seem to be normal noises yeah. that you would hear at you know night. It might sure. be actually more weird if it was silent. Um, but towards the end of your shift, it does get even quieter. A little disconcerting, but yeah. It is the quietest part of the night. Sure. Crow, I assume, goes and wakes up uh, good old Karu. Yep. Crow wakes up Karu and then heads back to the tent. Hey, Karu. Yeah. All right. Karu wakes up eventually from her night terrors. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> she goes ahead and rolls her... Perception. Wow. Very fact that she's very sure footed. She mistakes at being able to see in the dark because she's running around here. Look at me. I can't trip or nothing. Oh my God. Yeah, I rolled four. Wow. Um, with a four, you don't really. You have no idea what the heck's going on. Um,. <laughs> You're like, huh, this is weird. There's noise and no noise at the same time. That's weird. Ooh. The road. Um, and Crone, with your 11, you can hear some weird clanking. It kind of sounds like the rolling of logs for some reason. Crone, um... As he wakes the party up, morning guys, uh, and tell them the sound. You know, hey, there's clanking. And you guys are all getting up. It's the break of dawn. Everything seems to be in order. Um, but you do, you do see some weird, eerie green light on the horizon. Fish. Was that word just said fish? I heard the same thing. Ish. Yeah, I S H. Sorry. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, that it's like it's like neat. this direction. It's just a great show. There's lights. There's weed. <laughs> Telling. Um. Yeah. So, <laughs> Crone, you're waking everyone up, right? Yep. Karu, well, you're out here good. for some reason. She's trying to get a better view, you know, get in the middle of the road, uh, look down the road, see what's coming. I just want you to know you're the scientist that looks too far into the jungle when the T Rex pops out and eats him. I know. I watched the last Jurassic Park. Wow. Yes. If I ever die, I want to be eaten by a ty Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'll poop. Uh... Give me a perception check if you're checking over here then. I perceive a bunch of... Oh, 20. 20. You perceive that. Oh, my crap. Whereupon, she lightens her load a little bit as she runs back towards camp. <laughs> oh. Did not expect you to roll a high perception, but you did. That is a panicked run. She screams out, Skeleton! Skeleton! Skeleton coming for you! 
Mm, we should we should ship up. Mm. You would. You should. But you That's also really kind of uh, you you kind of missed with your last perception check something kind of big. Um, no. Big skeleton. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so there's lawn boy and something bigger. Fish. Oh! Okay. Okay, well, um, I'm going to go ahead and say it first, guys. Uh, we might be boned. Uh, <laughs> damn it, you beat me to it either way we're gonna have a skeleton of fun it's gonna be a bonanza it'll be a rib tickler it's gonna be spine tingling all right uh, humorous even i'm sorry i've lost my funny bone about this no bones about it <laughs> somehow um well you did see the kind of eerie glow on the horizon this thing with a mist about it pops up. It was actually on all fours, and now it, as it stands up, peering down at you guys, you can see that this gargantuan skeleton is no. looking at you. No. It has no. one eye aflame, and its gaze is, is looking directly upon you guys. Oh, you guys, color... Crow's pretty far back there. He's he's not seen, right? The skeleton's totally fine. Crump can get away. <laughs> the smaller skeletons are still very large, about as tall as the trees, but they're just kind of skulking about and have not quite noticed you guys yet. Usually, they just Somebody. roam aimless, aimlessly through the uh, the little wooded areas and and whatnot for anything edible, really. Um, are yeah, they attacking them. No, they don't have any blood. Ah! Trees, you have failed us. They're not edible to the trees. I thought they didn't have eyes. Yeah, but they know from the giant quake that it's not something that they should tangle with. Tremor sense and all. These things are huge. They're about as big as they are. And the trees go for smaller play, medi prey, medium or smaller creatures. Mm -hmm. It's usually what they go for. And these, these are the Gashidokuru. Although it is curious that the one has a, uh, a flaming eye instead of a regular eye. Is, is this... Big boned bastard, the one that we were warned about. Hmm. Hmm. Mayhaps. <laughs> but, um. Yup, if you guys want to start to figure out what you want to do, um. There would be rolling of initiative and stuff where we can wrap it up there because it's like 12 minutes till we have to stop. It's up to you. I'm... I'm sleepy. Okay. I'm thinking of wrapping up here because I'm scared of the length of combat. <laughs> All right. That sounds good. I Unless we can do diplomatically talk to these guys that will take even longer <laughs> bonjour bonjour <laughs> oh no i think it's a good place to wrap up though but right before we get into combat you guys have yeah. your your big bad revealed right there the epic gashadokuru <laughs> that you guys were all worried about <laughs> oh, these big roving skeletons. I'll oh, never run into them. Nope, you definitely oh. did. Because we were in the air. 
And this is actually bigger than the spider. Like, God damn. Fine. It's about the size of a skyscraper. They're like humongous. I've I've posted pictures that uh, were from you know the lore books and stuff. It makes me think of um, Tom Poco when climbing over the skyscrapers. Yeah, actually, that is yeah. a that's a gush. <laughs> so, so fun thing, fun thing here. Okay, so just just remember, as a fellow tall person, let me assure you of one yeah. fact: we are very easy to trip, and take a long time getting back up. A skateboard time, perhaps. <laughs> All we need to do is find big enough door frame that's just a little smaller than he is. Done. Or, 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 hear me out. Hear me out. We build TIE Fighters, and we trip him like AT-ATs. <laughs> I am all for that. Oh, no. Uh, we could send out a small kitten to draw its attention away from us, but if only we well, had a small kitten. You princess Well, kitten. here's the thing. Here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do, right? So what we can do is Russell and I will be on Team TIE Fighter. Russell and I need to go back to the Bureau and find some TIE Fighters. You guys hold us attention. We will come back with friends. Don't worry. Russell, come on. Now, when we come back, <laughs> we'll be traveling light speed, so we'll be right back. Yeah, hmm. be right back. Hey, Russell, how much is all yeah. that gold split two ways instead? I think I could do the math. In yeah, like three God. hours, it's going to take us to like get out of this place. Yeah. One for you, one for me. Two for you, <laughs> one, two for me. Three for you, one, two, three for me. Four for you, one, two, three, four for me. And that's called math. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Of the rings. All right, I can go to bed. Have a good night, guys. Have a good night. I should also go to bed, but does anyone have anything to plug? I do, I do. Oh, Check wait. Out my... Oh, wait, what happened? Is everyone still there? Yep, yep. Oh, okay. Plug it. All right. So check out my podcast. It is Service Entrance People Podcast. That's Service Entrance People Podcast, where we talk all about, you know, the fun shit that goes on in customer service, crazy things that happen at restaurants, and, you know, all kinds of fun toilet humor there, too. So, um, and you can reach us uh, at Service Entrance People Podcast at gmail.com or look us up on Facebook. Service Entrance People Podcast, or on Instagram at Service Entrance People Pod. That's it. Yep. Check it out. It's cool. The link is in the <laughs> chat. We have cat interns. Aww. Well, thanks very much, guys. I hope you had a great time. Yeah. And Thank you enjoyed the new map and the new bad guys. Yeah, thanks for the artwork, too. That's awesome. Nice. Pretty cool. Definitely ominous from the moment we got there. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> and, All right, you guys. See you next Monday. Yep, see you next talk Monday. Later. Bye. Yes. Yeah, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have fun. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.